This video is designed to walk through the tools and features found in the FET Masses and Spring simulation. After clicking on the Lab tab, we are going to enable some settings. The first thing we're going to do is we're going to set our damping to none because we don't want friction to slow down the motion of our spring. We're going to check the equilibrium line. We're also going to enable a movable line so that we can mark where the maximum amplitude is. And we're going to use the ruler and the stopwatch and this mass. Now when I place the mass on the spring, it automatically starts to move. You can adjust the amount of mass on the spring by using the slider at the top left. You can adjust your spring constant using the bar on the right. And by pressing the stop sign, it will automatically stop the mass and return it to the equilibrium position. So I'm going to go ahead and set this to 100 grams for now and hit the stop sign. You can use this ruler to measure the amplitude or the displacement that you're making with the spring. And the timer is here to measure the time it takes for the spring and mass system to move back and forth. I'm going to hit the pause button on the simulation and I'm going to hit the slow feature so that I can have time to react as I take data. I'm also going to hit play on the timer so that when I eventually move the mass I will be able to monitor the uh, actual time it takes for it to move one oscillation, one pattern all the way down, all the way back up and back to the starting point. So I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to set my reference line to 20. And what this does is lets me know that when the number 100 reaches that red line, that right there is my displacement of my spring. And so when I let this go, the timer should automatically start um, when I press play on the simulation. And once it gets all the way back down to that red line, I'm going to pause everything, and that right there would be my time for one oscillation. You can verify that time by resetting your timer, because again, we're humans, we can only react so quickly. Um, and so by resetting that, we can again time it again. And again, in slow motion mode, you're going to get a much better result than if you were uh, just doing this in the normal at normal speed you can see at normal speed it moves much much quicker and it's a lot harder to tell when it starts and stops and so if you wanted to you could count 10 oscillations if you wanted to take data in normal mode or you could just measure one oscillation in slow mode and that is how you can take some data using this activity to demonstrate that you completed the simulation uh, you can have a little text box, uh, you can open a Google Doc, um, put something that indicates it's your um, account that you're using so that I know that it's your screenshots that you're taking of your data. And then you can screenshot, you would have the time displayed here. You'd have your mass, your setup, all of that would be visible in your screenshot. And then if you change something about your setup, you would then take a second screenshot to document the second setup that you had that you're comparing to the first one um, to verify your predicted answer to your question.